So to find the uh, reconstruction error in, in the z position of the point, we next take the total derivative of the equation that gives us um, the, ex the expression for z, which is z equals fb over d. So if the only uncertainty is in the disparity d, I get delta z equals fb over d squared times minus delta d. The mean is going to be the expectation of the expected value of delta z. And since I said that the um, expected value of delta d is 0, then this is just equal to 0. The variance of the error is the expected value of delta z minus the mean of, of, uh, of, of z. And that I know is um, the mean is 0, so I get um, the expected value of that is just the expected value of delta z squared. Plugging in what delta z is, it's fb over d squared, so those are not random variables. So I just get it's the expected value of minus delta d squared, which is just fb over d squared, and expected value of delta d squared is just um, sigma sub d squared. So I get sigma sub z squared is equal to, um, whoops, these should be squared here, or that the standard deviation of the error in z is just fb over d squared times the standard deviation of sigma sub d. I can also write this as, if I can identify the z here, it's just z times sigma d over d. So let's take an example. We have a stereo vision system. Um, it finds the disparity of a point as 10 pixels. What is the depth of the point if f is 500 pixels, that's the focal length, and b is 10 centimeters, that's the separation distance? So I have z equals f b over d, which is 500 pixels. 10 centimeters and disparity is 10 pixels. So this gives us um, 500 centimeters. Okay, what is the uncertainty in terms of standard deviation of the depth error if the standard deviation of locating a feature in each image is one pixel? So using the um, result I got from the previous page, the error, the standard deviation in the error in z is z times uh, sigma d over d. Um, what is sigma d? Sigma d is, I recall, is um, the error in the locating the feature in the left position and the right position, and that's going to be uh, a 2. So sigma d is square root of 2. So I get um, 500 centimeters times square root of 2 pixels divided by 10 pixels. So this is about uh, 1.4 times 50, which is about 70 centimeters. Okay, um, I won't go into this, but how do you, how would you handle uncertainty if you had uncertainty in both disparity and focal length? So we would do it the same way. We would have, we would start with our expression for the depth. But now when we take the total derivative, we have to take it also with respect to focal length. So I would get delta f b over d plus um, f b over d squared times minus delta d. And then I would 
um, take the variance of, of that. Um, in the general case where we don't have aligned cameras, um, we can still compute the uh, 3D location of a point. And this shows how to do that. So let's say I have a point P that I'm observing in these two cameras. The image point is PL and PR in those two cameras. And I'm going to be using uh, normalized coordinates where the focal length equals 1. So I could find, since these correspond to rays, with a 3D coordinate XL, YL1, XR, YR1, I can continue those rays and intersect them to find point P. But these points may actually not intersect, these rays may not intersect, they might be skew. So instead, I'd like to find the point that's closest to the intersection of the two, as shown here. So um, to find this, I write the, um, the projection of P onto the left image this way. So M sub L here and M sub R are the external, the extrinsic camera parameter matrices. So for, um, for point in the left image, M is a three by four matrix with ones in the diagonal. And in the right image, it's the rotation matrix is 3 by 3 and the translation vector here, the 3 by 1. So those, um, the 3D vector PL and its projection are parallel, so their cross product should be 0. Similarly for the right point. So the point that I'm looking for, if there was no error, these would be exactly 0 but um, they're not, so I can solve for the P that uh, is the ideal point in the least square sense. So this is a system of equations, and I can solve for the unknown P, which is the values XL, YL, and ZL using least squares. So this is a um, fairly straightforward way to solve, to reconstruct a point P, and it also works for more than two cameras. Uh, you would simply have a third equation here that you would use. Okay, so let's go back to the stereo process. Um, so we would extract features from the left and the right image separately, match them to get their disparity, that's the correspondence problem, and then once we have the disparity we would compute the depth, that's called the reconstruction problem. Um, so the, the second step is the most difficult, finding the correspondence. To get an idea of how to solve the correspondence, we can look at how humans do it. So first of all, we note that matching features, we, we require features to be uh, similar in the left and right images. And you can do experiments like this. You can say, well, take, take a right image of a stereo pair and take the negative of it. The features are in the same place, but they just look differently. And this can't, we can't fuse this if we present this to a person. So this gives us a clue about how to design a computational algorithm. Another thing we could look at is the capability of human stereo vision to uh, be able to fuse a range of depths. So in human vision, we can rotate our eyes to focus or converge at a particular depth. So the points that are at that depth um, is a curve, actually it's a surface, it would be called the horopter, and if you are verged at that particular distance, then you can fuse um, points that are a little bit further and a little bit closer than that depth, and that area that you can fuse is called Panem's fusional area. And of course we can, we have the freedom to rotate our eyes to converge to a far or near target like this. So this Panem's fusional area is actually quite small, surprisingly small. This shows um, the range if you were to verge your eyes to look at a, a surface 40 centimeters away, you could um, fuse points that were 
up to five additional millimeters away or approximately five millimeters closer. So basically from 39.5 centimeters to 40.5 centimeters would be the range at which you could uh, do binocular fusion. So the fact that we can actually perceive depth over a much wider range indicates that we are doing a lot of uh, verging. We're changing the angle of our eyes to accommodate different depths. Um, we can also get clues by looking at the visual cortex, cells in the visual cortex, and we can find that some of them are tuned for uh, zero disparity, so and some for points that are closer and some that are further. Another thing that we can do is look at um, experiments involving random dot stereograms. So these are images that are identical except for a shift, uh, horizontal shift between them. And we can fuse these to see a surface quite vis uh, vividly. So this shows that the system, the stereo vision system, can function independently. We don't need any other clues like shape or color or movement to do stereo. But um, it also shows that um, there's a lot of ambiguity in matching points here. You know, a black dot here looks like many black dots here, and so that highlights the difficulty in matching them. 